Hello, I'm James Tiburon with EarthKeeper, and I am joined today with Dr. Robert Schock and Graham Hancock. And so I wanted to welcome both of these gentlemen to Colorado for the uh, conference that Thank we you. are going Thank to you. have. Both of these gentlemen are incredible academics that are bringing forth information that we consider to be so vitally important for humanity to learn our true origins. And so to start with you, Graham, you have a new book coming out that I is do. Magicians of the Gods. It's called Magicians of the Gods. It's the sequel to my best-known book, which was Fingerprints of the Gods, which yes. was published 20 years ago in yes. 1995. Magicians of the Gods is a completely new book. It's not an update of Fingerprints of the Gods. But the fact is that there has been such a deluge of new information that supports the concept of a lost civilization going back 12,000 years ago or more, information that has come out in the last 20 years that I felt compelled to to produce an, a new book on that this and to bring that information together between two covers yes and the book will be available uh, later this year later in the, 2015 okay the UK edition published by Hodder and Stoughton is coming out on the 10th of September which is really soon yes. uh, the US edition is st. Martin's press I'm trying to get that book out in November. At the moment, they would like to publish it in February, but I'm hoping that we'll bring the release date of the book forward to November. Yes. There's a chance we will. We'll, well see. The, well, the presentations that you provided today were just, ab and, and yesterday, were absolutely fascinating. Thank you. And the same for Dr. Shock. And you. Robert, your book, Forgotten Civilization, covers similar uh, topics. Can you yeah. speak a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think yeah. what we're finding is that civilization, and I call it Forgotten Civilization. Yeah. For the title of the book, yes. is that we have civilization going back before the end of the last ice age. Yes. The end of the last ice age, I'm using the geological dating of 9700 BC. People argue, you know, within a century. Yes. But the point is that civilization did not originate, as the standard dogma says, between, say, four and five. 4,000, 3,000 BC, you know, mere 5,000, 6,000 years ago, but we have what I'm calling an earlier cycle of civilization yes. that goes back 10,000, approximately 10,000 yes. BC and older, and I think that's something that yep. we both agree on, have been working on yes. for a very long time, coming in some cases from different points of view, sure. sometimes very similar points of view. Yes. For instance, you've written about, and I've certainly worked on quite a bit, the Sphinx yes. and the redating of the Sphinx. Yes. We have things like Gebekli Tepe now yes. in southeastern Turkey yes. that goes back to that yeah. earlier. Well, period. I think your work on the Sphinx, Robert, is you know just absolutely crucial work in this in this that. field. Absolutely. And you know, you you were sub subjected to grievous attacks by the oh, academic yeah. community for daring to suggest that the Sphinx might be older. Uh, but what the the, the new evidence that's coming out, Gobekli Tepe and a number of other sites around the world, is providing a context for that. And suddenly the notion of a 12,000-year-old Sphinx doesn't seem so crazy at all. It yeah. seems, you know, really, really something that should be explored. Yeah, I think it is actually fitting now into a context. Yes. And something yes. I was told, you remember the days, back in the early 90s, well, where's the other evidence? Where's their independent evidence? Oh, there's no context for civilization, for a Sphinx or other sophisticated monumental structures mm. back at that period in time. And yeah. now we have now we context. have it. We have that context popping up all all over the world. Exactly. Uh, and and here is how a paradigm changes. That uh, it uh, paradigms never change overnight. Paradigms have That's to be right. overwhelmed by new evidence. Overwhelmed by uh, new evidence and waiting for the old generation, I hate to say <laughs> To die off, yes. even no, it's physically true. die off, it's or true. at least retire. It's true. Because paradigms, unfortunately, are very ideological, and they get locked into people's framework and their sense of reality. And it's very difficult It's very difficult to change one. But little by little, the new evidence accumulates. The old paradigm cannot explain it. The strongest uh, proponents of the old paradigm begin to reach the end of their natural life cycle, new minds come in exactly. and a new idea becomes and I, accepted. And I'm finding that because I teach at Boston University. Yes, yes. And what I'm finding in academia, and I don't want to have just rose-colored glasses, I think this is real, is that a new generation yes. now is oh, starting, starting to, to emerge. emerge and to look at these things seriously yeah. because it has been, well, for me, 25 years 
of working on the Sphinx. So we yep. really are talking a generation now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. The, the, young, the younger generation, something extraordinary is happening. There's a, there's a huge opening of minds. Perhaps it's because of the, the internet definitely plays a role. Oh, yeah. that people have access instantly That's to information right. that they didn't have before. But I, I notice a, a huge shift in consciousness taking place and, 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 and a growing awareness of the extraordinary possibilities in our past. Yeah. Now, you, you've both spoken about solar radiation about comments and about an ice age that ended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can you share a little bit sure. about Sure. I think that something that's very important and no one can disagree with at yes. this point is that we have very strange things going on at the end of the last ice age. We yes. have what is known as the Younger Dryas, yes. which is a period of about 1,200 years, depending on how you date, but I would, as a geologist, say about 1,200 years. Yes where it was starting to get warm or from the last glacial maximum mm -hmm. when it, the ice was thickest, yes. it was coldest, it was starting to warm up and it was doing that somewhat gradually, slowly. Then you have this cold snap yes. and you have this dramatic cold snap about 10,900, 10,800 depending on how you date it, BC and it gets very, very cold, then about 1,200 years later, this incredible warming, yes. which literally brings us out of the last ice age. Yes. So that can be uh, agreed. That's the geologic record. Now, it's we can argue about and we can hypothesize what was causing that to occur. Yes. Um, uh, there's the hypothesis of a comet. Yes bringing uh, the Younger Dryas, initiating the Younger Dryas, yes. which makes some sense from, you know, um, blocking the sun and debris and that type of yes. thing. What I've actually focused on primarily in my work, and this is the subtitle of the book, is um, my book is Forgotten Civilization, my most recent book, Forgotten Civilization, yes. subtitled The Role of Solar Outbursts in yes. Our Past and Future. Mm. Yes. And I focus not on the initiator of the Younger Dryas, but what I believe brought the Younger Dryas to a close in yes. 9700 BC, and my hypothesis, and what I see the evidence indicating, is that there was a major solar outburst. Yes. And so there's probably yeah. a couple of things happening here, mm -hmm. but what I've really focused on was 9700 BC, and what brought the final termination yes. of the younger okay. dryas and yeah. therefore the final termination I think, of the ice age. I think Robert Great. and I are yeah. looking at the we're looking at the same mystery. You have this exactly. period of you have this period of extraordinary turbulence. I mean it's difficult to conceive of it in modern terms. Yes. Nobody alive on Earth today has lived through an episode like that episode exactly. between between um, 10,800 or 10,900 BC and 9,600 or 9,700 BC. That that 1,200 year period of absolute mm -hmm. chaos and horror on the Earth. And yes. you know what we're what we're both looking at, and others are working on this as well. What was the agencies that 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 caused that? And one yes. theory is that a comet was involved, and another theory that Robert is working very strongly with is that the, the Sun yes. being involved in these in these changes. And I my my view is that the the jury is not in on yes. either of these matters and, yet. Yes. What we have is a mystery and it's yes. great that people are and coming at that mystery from different perspectives and, I, and looking at the and possibilities. I also want to point out that the theories are not necessarily incompatible. Not at all. Because you have different things happening at the beginning at the end. Yeah. There's also evidence that cometary activity sets off solar activity. Exactly. They are not yes. interrelated. Yeah. Um, even in the modern day, people have been documenting when you have comets diving into the sun or yeah. fragments of comets it's diving into the sun, you have major coronal mass Sets off ejections, CMAs, solar yeah, outbursts, yeah, CMAs. Yeah. So we're, I think what's really important for our purpose right now for this discussion is that you have that turbulent yes. period and you have advanced civilization which gets Ex exactly. Extinct. Which existed right before that turbulent period right. and, and vanishes. And then everything that we've been taught about history by the by the mainstream, it all happens after that that's period. Right. Yes. And that's they forget right. that that period existed. Right in the backyard of history, we have this huge enigma, which is not being taken account of by the mainstream historians and, exactly. and, and archaeologists. And that's why I would say maybe their work since 9600 BC is pretty solid. Mm -hmm. They built a nice house, but that house of history is built on foundations of sand. Exactly. Exactly. Because since about 9,700, 9,600 BC, you can see in the archaeological records or 
primitive and it sort of builds yes. up. Mm -hmm. And what yes. I'm suggesting just in my talk now and in the book is that this was essentially uh, what we could call dark age yes. after the fall exactly. of the earlier cycle of civilization. So yes. yes, the historians and archaeologists have it right since that period, but what they fail to acknowledge is that there was a major civilization, major sophistication at an earlier period yes. that was brought yes. to an end by natural catastrophes. Yes. Exactly. So exactly. The, the concepts of Atlantis, of other lost oh. civilizations are coming much more they into... They start to make perfect they sense. They and make as perfect Robert sense. and I have both yeah. pointed out, Plato's yes. date for the, for the, for yeah, the destruction of Atlantis in. ties yeah. in exactly. And can mean, you review Plato's date just briefly for the... 9,000 years before the time yes. of Solon. Yes. Solon lived in 600 BC. Yes. 9,600 BC, 11,600, 11,700 years ago. The traumatic end of the Younger exactly. Dryas, a rapid period of global warming, huge floods hitting the world ocean. Yeah. I don't think it's just coincidental that Plato just happened to come up with that date. Yes, yes. I mean, you know, that would be beyond exactly. credibility. Beyond last, credibility. Last yeah. question. What would be your idea of the time of construction of the Great Pyramid and any ideas of how it would have been constructed? each of you, if you'll take that briefly. Uh, okay, I will take it briefly first, because I'm not sure yes. if we agree on this necessarily. We may find we do. We may find we do. <laughs> um, right now, I don't know how it was constructed. Yes. I'm not even going to address that right yes. now, because that's a complex yes. issue, and um, I'm not an engineer. I've spoken to yes. many engineers. However you look at it, this is not a trivial feat to yeah, construct absolutely. it. And yeah. I've been in the Great Pyramid yes. many times, as of course you have. I've yes. been up in the relieving chambers and seen the huge monoliths of granite. That yes. I mean, this is a... The alignments, the, the calendars. Alignments, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but when was yeah. it built? I am happy with at least parts of it being Old Kingdom. For instance, I think this might be your opinion now, but up in the relieving chambers, those um, cartouches and whatnot, I'm convinced that they're genuine. Old Absolutely, kingdom. because they disappear between the blocks. That's you right. shine a powerful light into the gaps between the blocks, and there are gaps between the blocks up there, and there you can are. see that they disappear. You can see. You Nobody can could afford them. Now, the, the cartouche of Khufu is in plain view, and yes, it, it's yeah. possible that That's it was possible. We can't that, write that yeah, out. Yeah. But, but, but it, it's, a mi it's a minor point. It's a minor actually. point. So I would say that. What you see today, the facade, the major structure, I'm comfortable with that being Old Kingdom, third millennium BC. Now, on the other hand, m based on my analysis and uh, you know, working with it and having been there many times, I think, for instance, this subterranean chamber Absolutely. deep under the pyramid is much, Me much too. older. Me too. That, that goes back to this much earlier, a much earlier period of time. Yes. I think that at one point there may have been, uh, we'll call it like a platform built over yep. it, which is now incorporated into what we see as the Great Pyramid. So I think like many of these structures, you have additions to additions to yep. additions. That it's, this Const is Constantly being side. overbuilt. Yes. I, I, I completely agree with you, as a matter of fact. I, I think the big question marks are over the Sphinx and over the megalithic um, temples, so-called, in, mm -hmm. front of, in front of the yes. Sphinx. The, the possibility of those going back to the 12,000, roughly, period is very, very high. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the pyramids themselves, in the form we see them today, we cannot divorce the ancient yes. Egyptians from those. Right. Yes. And I think, that I, I, I think that actually what we're looking at at Giza is a very nuanced site. Mm -hmm. It has what the archaeologists have done is they've just taken everything and lumped it together into the Old Kingdom period. Whereas in fact we're looking at a site with great complexity. The ancient Egyptians were the inheritors of the knowledge from the earlier time. Yes. And they were they were simply I believe fulfilling an earlier plan. But we cannot separate them from the Great Pyramid and it would be wrong to do so. The Great Pyramid, the the, the three Great Pyramids of Giza rightly and properly do belong to the, the, the period of around about 2,500 to 3,000 yes. BC, but they are built on prehistoric foundations. That, I think, is the fundamental That's the crucial issue. Point. They are built on 
prehistoric yes. foundations, yeah. there is something that goes back much earlier. Way earlier, than that. way back to 12,000 or more. That's right. Prehistoric foundations, and you can see elements of those prehistoric p foundations, and right out there in plain view, exactly. the Great Sphinx, with its precipitation That's induced right. weathering, has been proclaiming to us loudly, and you and John West were the first to really pick this up that the Great Sphinx does not fit into the picture that Egyptologists, exactly. the very simplistic picture that Egyptologists want to give us of, in fact, a very complex and nuanced site. Well, I'd like to thank you both for your time and thank you on behalf of humanity for the work that you're doing. Right. I think it is vitally important and we have a tremendous respect for both of you. So, Graham Hancock, Dr. Robert Schock, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.